Indeed, God's love lifted, lifted me. Today we have Pastor Victor coming to share with us God's word. We celebrate you, Pasi. May God bless you. And last, Pastor Kiniti, that is here. Pastor Kiniti, kuja, 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 kuja. Sutomia, Pastor Victor. Ah, so. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, indeed, we want to thank you for your love that has lifted us. And even right now, as you bring your word to us through your servant, may we experience that love through the words of promise that you have for us. Words that will uplift our souls. Words that will remind us of your love and your promises for us. And now, Lord, we want to lift up your servant to you, Pastor Victor, as he brings your word. Your spirit is upon him. Use him, O oh Lord, to the glory and honor of your name. Open our hearts that we may hear your voice. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's give the Lord a mighty hand clap this morning. Let's appreciate. Hello, hello, hello. Let's appreciate Pastor Kiniti once more. Yeah, we can do better than that, church. Let's appreciate him. Let's appreciate him. Pastor Kiniti has not been feeling well, but we thank God that he's up on his feet and walking. We appreciate you, Mchungaji. God bless you. Yeah. Yeah, we can clap. You can go ahead and do that. I don't know whether we have anyone from Ethiopia in the congregation this morning. If you are from Ethiopia, if you can raise up your hand. It, you represent Ethiopia. Wonderful, wonderful. Let's appreciate our sister. Yeah, Ethiopia is a great nation. Remember the Ethiopian eunuch. Yeah? Queen of Sheba. The connection between Africa and Israel is also through the nation of Ethiopia, and we bless the Lord. Today I would like us to share from the word of God as we read today's scriptures, which are coming from the book of Mark. Maybe if you can give us Mark chapter 5, from verse 21 to 34, the story of the woman with the issue of blood. Shall we stand as we read God's word this morning? Amen. We would like to welcome those who are watching us online. Welcome to Parklands Baptist Church. Welcome in the presence of the Lord. There is fullness of joy. And in his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. When Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came and when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet. He pleaded earnestly with him, my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman and a woman was there <clears throat> who had a subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she only grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she was because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, shall we read this again together? Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. Shall we read that again? Go back to verse 29. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. Verse 30. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see, <clears throat> the people crowding against you. His disciples answered, And yet you can ask 
who touched me. But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. 34. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Father, we thank you that the entrance of your word brings light and understanding to the simple. Holy Spirit, Spirit of God, Spirit of Revelation, Spirit of Wisdom, Spirit of Power, would you minister to your people? Use me as a mouthpiece, even for the glory of your name. We thank you, Lord, and we worship you, even because you have prayed in Jesus' name. You may have your seats. We are in the season of divine favor. Tell your neighbor divine favor. Divine favor. We are in the season of divine favor, a time to elevate. What is elevation? Elevation is an action or a fact of raising, being raised to a higher or more important level. So God is elevating us. God is elevating you. God is elevating me. Because this is the season of elevation. What is favor? Favor is kindness beyond what is due. Kindness be, beyond what is due, an expression of grace. Not because you deserve it, not because I deserve it, but because God is God, he has chosen. He has chosen to be kind to you. He has chosen to be kind to me, regardless of my situation. Therefore, this is our time for elevation. Amen. Our time for uplifting from where we are at to a higher level. We've read the story of the woman with the issue of blood. And this morning, just to remind her that the story of the woman with the issue of blood is the story of persistent faith. The story of persistent faith because this lady chose to take a position of faith yeah, against every condition that was prevailing then. If you remember from the Levitical law, a woman in such a condition will not be allowed to mingle in a crowd. Anything she touched or anyone she touched was declared unclean. And if you follow this story, the woman is actually intercepting Christ while he is on his way to minister to Jairus' daughter. Therefore, this woman is seizing her moment and saying, I will not allow this condition to continue. And therefore, she took a position and seized her moment. And going by the story, she got her blessing. Nothing was going to stand on her way. They say when a woman is determined to get something, she will definitely get it. Remember the persistent widow in Luke chapter 18? She pushed for justice and she got it. Remember Esther, yeah? determined to stand before the king and she said, if I perish, I perish. Remember the Samaritan woman, after spending some few minutes with Christ, she became the greatest evangelist who brought the whole village to Jesus. How about Hannah? For the many years she was waiting on the Lord to be blessed with her son, she was at Shiloh on this very day, persistently crying unto the Lord. And the Bible says the Lord granted her request. The story of the woman with the issue of blood is a story of persistent faith 
that brought the woman to her point of elevation. Persistent, pressing, pushing faith, pressing against conditions, pressing against the law, pressing against the crowd, and she go to the place of her elevation. This is the season of your elevation. This is the season of your elevation, and your elevation is now. When God moves, everything else stops. Hello? If when the president comes, there is order and semblance, how about when we are in the presence of the Lord and the Lord is moving? Then everything must stop and the Lord must have his way. Therefore, we are declaring to you, your elevation time is now. This is your elevation moment. And I'm praying that the Lord will lift you, even from where you are at, even to a higher level. So I'd like to share with us four points concerning this elevation season. And the first point is, rise against your obstacle. Seize your elevation moment. And then the final point is that we will have an elevation experience. Let's go to the first point. Rise against your ob obstacle. You must take your position of elevation. Elevation will not just happen. You must take your position. I'm trying to imagine the, the normal elevator that we have in, in the malls and in the supermarkets. If you don't take your time and step on the elevator, you will not be elevated. Amen? You have to decide to make up your mind and say, this is the moment for me. Therefore, I take a position, step on the elevator, and the elevator will do what it's supposed to do. Therefore, you must, I must, we must take a position. We must take a position of elevation. In verse 24 to 26 of the scripture we just read from Mark chapter 5, the Bible says, So Jesus went with him. A large crowd followed and pressed around him. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and has spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she only got worse. She had several obstacles. This woman had suffered 12 years physically. Probably, it's not in the scriptures, but I'm trying to put my mind and just uh, walk around her condition. I would think probably she was anemic, yeah? And probably she might have suffered bouts of dizziness. And maybe at some point she may have suffered low blood pressure and constant fatigue. She must have needed a special diet so that she could be able to bring up, to bring up her blood level to the normal level. She, she suffered physically. This lady suffered 12 years spiritually. Leviticus 15, 25, the Bible talks about women and such medical challenges would not, be de would not be clean. They were unclean. And therefore, they would not be able to, to mingle with the rest of the society. And anyone who was touched by her or touched anything she had was de declared unclean the whole day. This woman suffered socially. The, the discomfort of what she was going through she will not mingle with everyone else. And probably some members of society looked at her and said, ah, look at that woman. Yeah, the woman who is always having a certain kind of walk. A woman who is probably having a certain kind of mannerism or demeanor that will demean, her, will demean her in the presence of many people. She suffered socially. This woman suffered economically. The Bible is telling us that she spent everything she had. Probably she had some savings. And all her saving were wiped out because of her conditions. Probably she had a nice dress. And this was the only thing she had, the only wealth she had. And she sold it. Probably she had a cow. Probably she had a goat. Probably she had a house. But this condition made her suffer economically. Blind Bartimaeus in Mark chapter 10 verse 46 to 49 was in a similar situation. But when he heard that Jesus 
was around the place where he was. The Bible says there, then they came to Jericho as Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city. A blind man but Timas, which means son of Timas, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus is a God of mercy. He's a God of compassion. Probably you are suffering physically. Probably your body is wearing away. Probably you have a medical condition or someone you know has a medical condition. Probably you have a spiritual condition. Your relationship with God is in not such a very good state. Probably socially, yeah, you have experienced a level of separation from everyone, everyone else or some people around you. And probably you have suffered economically or financially. Maybe your business is doing, not doing well or probably you are in debt. The word of today is to remind you your elevation time is now. Your elevation time is now. Because today is the day and now is the time. This is the season. The word of the season is the word of uplifting. The word of the season is the word of favor. God desires to lift you up. God desires to favor you. This is your season, your season of elevation. But you must get agitated enough. Hello? You must be, you must be agitated enough by your condition. If it is a physical condition, probably a spiritual condition, probably an economic condition, probably a spiritual condition. There is no uplifting if you are not at a lower level. Hello? You must be at a lower level for you to desire to be uplifted. Therefore, at the level where you are at, you must desire, you must desire, you must expect. Those who come before the Lord must come with an expectant heart. They must come waiting upon the Lord. For those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You came this morning, and, and I'm sure the pastors and deacons board did not send a message to you to tell you this morning, come to Parklands Baptist Church. But the Holy Spirit has prompted you to come this morning. Therefore, my prayer to you is that I pray that you are expectant and expectant of the Lord because this is your season, your season of elevation. Amen? Amen. David in 1 Samuel 17, 28 had to overcome his obstacle. 1 Samuel 17, 28, we read about David. David is sent by his father to go and take bread to his, to his brothers who are in the battlefront. Actually, David would have said, Ah, Daddy, why are you sending me to this place? Uh, I, I would like to, I, I normally take care of my father's sheep, and that is comfortable enough for me. But this was a detour for him. He was told, Go take bread to your brothers. And while he is at the battlefront, this is what happens. When Eliab, David's oldest, oldest brother, heard him speaking with the men, he burned with anger at him and asked, Why have you come down here? And with whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? I know how conceited you are and how wicked your heart is. You came down only to watch the battle. Hello? Look at such taunting. You only came to watch the battle. Yeah. And that is the eldest brother taunting the young brother. Hello? He was sent by his father to take bread to his brothers. But I want you to capture something in this story. David never left his sling. Hello? David never left his sling because it was his elevation moment time. He knew God has been with me when I was taking care of my father's sheep and therefore I will not leave the sling behind because I know the Lord has delivered me using this sling and soft stones. Even today, I will carry it with me. Hello, David. 
raised, he raised against his obstacles. He will not allow his brother to deter him from taking his position, even in the battlefront. We must rise against your obstacle. Rise against your obstacle. You must be desperate enough to say the Lord is able to lift me up out of this condition. You must be desperate enough to trust God that he is able, more than able, to lift you up from your condition because this is your time. This is your season for elevation. This is your season for elevation. If nobody is saying that, would you say that to yourself? This is my season. This is my season of elevation. I'm telling myself as I also tell you because this is my season of elevation. Amen? Amen. Let's go to the second point. Seize your elevation moment. So you must rise above your obstacle. You must rise above your obstacle and you must seize your elevation moment. Take faith as your key for elevation. I say take faith as your key for elevation. For faith is substance of the things you hope for. The evidence of the things you do not see. Therefore, you shall walk not by sight, but you shall walk by faith because God honors faith. I said God honors faith. Salvation is by faith. You believe, you receive. Miracles happen because we believe. God is not asking for you to pay anything. You only need to believe. And believing is the opposite of unbelief. Instead of believing, you can choose to worry. You can choose to fear. But if you choose to have faith, to see things from God's point of view, that is the beginning of your shifting. That is the beginning of your paradigm shifting. The way you know God is the way God will reveal himself to you. That is the beginning of your uplifting. Amen? Take faith as your key for your elevation. The Bible says in Mark 5, 27 to 28, when she heard about Jesus, when she heard about Jesus, hey, when you hear about Jesus, the name above every name, the lion of the tribe of Judah, it will not leave you the same way. You will sense a difference, a, a, a stirring of water in your spirit. The name that sends shockwaves in the kingdom of darkness, the name that sets the captive free. The name that heals every disease and infirmity. The name that provides for your needs. For every need shall be supplied. The Lamb of God who takes away your sins. When she heard about Jesus, she forgot about the 12 years when she heard about Jesus, 12 years of infirmity were coming to an end. When she heard about Jesus, she said to herself, I will intercept. I will not allow this condition to continue taking over my life. Church, we are talking about the same Jesus. Not different from the Jesus who walked on earth over 2,000 years ago. 
it is not a story. Hello? It is the reality. I said it can happen to you. Even today, if you only believe. Yes, if you only she had, she had, you have had, my sister, you have had, my brother, you have had, you continue to hear. Every Sunday, you are hearing. When she heard about Jesus, she came, be, she came up behind him in the crowd. A woman. Do you know what the Jews say? They say, thank God. I'm not a Gentile. I'm not a dog and I am not a woman. This lady pressed on. She came behind him. I'm telling you, Jesus had his inner cabinet. Yes, he had 12 people surrounding him. So there were these 12 people surrounding, but she came behind him. Yeah? And she said to herself, it was a discussion between her spirit and her body saying, if only I will touch the clock of his garment. He doesn't need to talk to me. I don't have to see him. He doesn't have to touch me. If only I will touch the clock of his garment. She didn't need the touch of Christ. She took a step of faith. I'm telling you, there is no woman like that woman in the Bible. There is no woman like that woman. Everyone else got their miracle. You know, Jesus will say, hey, your faith has made you whole. This one, hey, you've heard of miracles being grabbed. How many people were around Jesus, hanging around him and close to him, and yet did not experience what she experienced? Try to imagine the story. Jesus is in a hurry going to heal Jairus' daughter. But this woman is saying to herself, if only I will touch the hem of his garment. Remember, she's unclean. She doesn't deserve. But she's walking, pushing the crowd away because she had faith. Because she believed it happened to her. Faith. Where is your faith? The Bible says, if your faith is as small as a mustard seed, you shall speak to your mountain. You shall speak. It is not Pastor Victor saying it. It is the Lord saying it to you. You shall speak to your mountain and your mountain will obey you. Yes. Faith, the substance of the things you hope for, the evidence. Hey, listen. There will be evidence. Evidence meaning there will be a testimony. People will say, yes, we saw it. It happened. Yes. Where there is faith, something must happen. And there will always be evidence. Seize your elevation moment by faith. Maybe this lady had heard the story about Christ in Mark chapter 1 verse 23 to 28 about this man who was demoniac and Jesus healed him. Probably she had heard the story of Mark chapter 1 from verse 40 to 45 and Jesus healed this leprous man. Maybe she had heard the story of Mark chapter 2 from verse 1 to 5 about the paralytic. Do you remember the story of this man who was paralyzed and his friends actually dug on the roof to bring him down. Okay? What faith is this that people can deal with the roof? Okay, suppose the person didn't get healed. Do you, now, the owner of the house, huh? 
The owner of the house, who actually took care of that roof? You guys, the Bible is interesting. It doesn't tell you some things. Eh? You got to think about them. Yeah? Now, I'm, I'm even wondering, eh? do you know how much that roof costed? And when this was happening and Jesus was there preaching, were people looking up or down? What was going on? The faith of this man's friend brought healing to this man. Faith is the key. Media, will you give us Romans chapter 4, verse 17 to 24? Romans chapter 4, from verse 17 to 24. As it is written, I have made you father of many nations. Listen, when God is telling Abraham this, Abraham has no child. But Abraham has chosen to believe. As it is written, I have made you father of many nations. Not one nation, but father of many. He is father of many, but he has none. He has none. I have made you father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed. The God. Hey, can we read this together? The God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. Can we read this again? The God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. The power to speak into things that are not is within you. It is upon you to take that position. As it is written, I have made you father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God in whom he believed. The God gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. Continue. Against. When the Bible is saying all hope, there was no hope left. Let us say against all hope, Abraham was hopeless. Abraham in hope believed and so. And so, and so, he only believed. Hey, is that too much? Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations. Just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Continue. Without weakening in his faith. His condition was weakening, but his faith was strong. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact. We are dealing so much with facts, and we are forgetting there is faith. Yes, the fact is your business is not doing well. The fact is you are in debt. The fact is you have not even paid your rent. The fact is things are not working for you. That is only a fact. Yes. He faced the fact that his body was as good as dead. Since he was about 100 years old. And that Sarah's womb was also dead. Listen. God has the power to bring dead things to life. God has the power to bring dead things to life. Romans 8 1 says, Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life, there is a law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus that has set you free from the, sea, from the law of sin and death. I speak life. Lahaim in Hebrew. Lahaim. I speak life to you. I speak life to that business. I speak life to that health condition. I speak life to that physical condition. In the name of Jesus. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God. God has promised. God has promised do not waver do not waver in the promises that God has given you. You shall not waver. Concerning unbelief, 
regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith. Give glory to God. Being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. This is your season of elevation. I say this is your season of elevation and I'm telling you we must get testimonies. This is not our just passing by. Isaiah 55, 9 to 11. As the land drops from heaven and does not leave the, the, the ground the same, so is my word. Go back. Go back to Romans chapter 5. Go back to Romans where we were reading about, about Abraham and his faith. Verse 20. Verse 20. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory. He's giving glory even when the condition has not changed. Give glory to God. Church, give glory to God regardless of the situation. Give glory to God. Give glory to God. Verse 21. Being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he had promised. 22. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. 23. The words it was credited to him were written not for him alone but also for who? For who? Say for me. For me. To whom God will credit righteousness for us who believe in him who raised Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. Faith! Faith! Faith is the key to your elevation. Faith is your key to your elevation. You will speak to your mountain. You will speak to your mountain and your mountain will be moved. And our final point, elevation experience. Elevation experience. Verse 29 and 42, there was an experience of an elevation. Amen? The Bible says in verse 29 of Mark chapter 5, there is this word, immediately her bleeding stopped. And she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. Immediately. Immediately. I'm saying immediately. I'm saying immediately. Hello? Hello? This word is going to somebody. I believe it. There is something that will happen immediately. Hey, we are in the season of immediately, instantly. This is the season. We are not waiting. We are not waiting. There shall be no more delay. We are in the season of immediately and suddenly. Because God is promoting you. You don't have to, to, to ask for it. The battle is not for the strong. Neither there is for the swift. God is doing something supernatural in this season of the immediately. The season of the suddenly. The season of the instantly. Yes, God is saying you have waited too long. You have prayed too long. Hello? You have watered too long. This is my time of visitation. Divine appointment is divine visitation. Hello? This is your season. This is your season. My sister, my brother, this is your season. Shall we be up on our feet as the worship team takes their position? This is your season. The season of immediately. The season of instantly. You have waited. You have cried. And you are wondering, will the Lord really come for me? This is your season. I want you to come. I want you to come. Is it a health condition? Probably your condition or somebody you know. I want you to come. 
Probably it's a financial situation. You are in debt. Your business is not doing well. I want you to come. Probably it's any other condition. Maybe a family condition. I want you to come. I want you to come. This word is for you. Please come, please come, please come. The season is now. We shall not wait. There shall be no more delay. There sh- Where is your faith? Give us more faith. Increase my faith. Increase my faith. Lord, increase my faith. This is your season. Take your position. Your position of faith. Trust God. He's doing it. This is your season. The season of immediately. The season of suddenly. You have waited. You have cried. And wondered. When will this ever happen? This is your season. This is your time. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. It will not continue. 12 years of suffering. It will not continue. Yes. Yes, it is Jesus. Yes, it's Jesus. It is Jesus in my soul. Yes. For I have touched And his blood has made me whole. I wanted to mention that condition. What is it? The, continue singing. What is it? Mention it. Mention it. Mention it. Financial condition. Mention it. Health condition. Mention it. Whatever it is. Mention it. Mention it. Mention it. Mention it. Mention it. Yes, it's over. We are cutting you out. Financial problem cutting you out. Infirmity cutting you out. Relationships, relationship problems cutting you out. You shall suffer no more. You shall suffer no more. You shall suffer no more. I'm raising you. I'm lifting you up. I'm ministering to you. God of grace. God of grace. Father, we bless you. Father, we bless you. You are Jehovah Jireh. The Lord who supplies every of our needs. According to your riches in glory through Christ Jesus. Lord, we speak to that financial condition now. That silver and gold belongs to you, Abba Father. The earth and its fullness thereof. Would you minister your provision? Even in the name of Jesus. That financial condition. That debt. We are saying the Lord is removing it. The Lord is ministering to you. In the name of Jesus. He's the Lord Jehovah El Shaddai. All sufficient God. Father we pray. Even concerning that health condition. Our Father. You are pierced uh, for our transgressions. Uh, the church ties them and the us pieces upon you. And by your wounds we are healed. Jesus, you did good. You did good. Father, you did good. You are a good God. You are a good God. May you lift up this one from this medical condition. Even in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Father, we worship you. Father, we magnify your name. You are a good God. You are a good God. You are a good God. Able to do exceedingly, Father. Abundantly. Above all we ask or think. According to your power that works within us. Lord, we glorify your name. We worship you. We honor you. You are able. More than able. Father, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We worship you. We honor you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 You shall suffer no more. You shall suffer no more. I said you shall suffer no more. I said you shall suffer no more. I said you shall suffer no more. This is your elevation moment. 
Hand clap to the Lord. This is your elevation moment. This is your elevation time. This is your elevation time. Father, you are elevating us. 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 Because you are a God of grace. Because you are a God of grace. Not because we are good. But it's because you are good. It's because you are a good father. This is our season. And you are a God of grace. Not because we qualify. But it is because you are God. It is because you are God. And we bless you. We bless you. Give glory to the Lord. 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 Lord. The Lord bless you. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord make his countenance be upon you. The Lord give you peace. The Lord give you peace. And now may the grace for Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Your season of elevation is now. Amen. The Lord bless you.